Hey guys, this is Maria, and today we are going to do an ethereal angel. Now, this pattern you can find, it's very well known for angels, but I'm going to make it kind of my own, and I kind of drew in the lines that I want to keep. I wanted to keep her body and her hair, I wanted it to be nice and flowy, but I wanted to simplify the design. So I did this by just using my permanent marker and making those score lines on the paper that will still show that the dress has flow to it. And then I marked them off. Now I used a beautiful, beautiful wispy white glass for this. I just love this glass. I use it all the time, any chance I can get for my moon phases, you name it. I love it. And I used this for her body. I wanted to design my own wings for her. I wanted her, of course, to be different. When I do use patterns, I really try to make them my own. Which, like in this case, I, I kind of simplified the pattern, but I definitely don't want the wings. Then it would just be even, it would just be a simplified version of that pattern. So I wanted to kind of make her more kind of open. I cut out her body in an iridescent white wispy glass. That is what this glass is called. And for her wings, I actually used a rippled iridized glass, a clear glass. So the entire piece is going to be iridized, but it will be with two different glasses. And this glass is, you know, very much the same. So in certain lighting, it will look all the same. I know a lot of people wouldn't do it this way. I want to keep her really ethereal and mysterious and light and look like she's floating. So I chose this route, um, but I know a lot of people probably, you know, don't like that. They would want a colored dress or, or colored hair, but when I think of an angel, I really just can't think of what they would look like. I hate to think that they have, you know, they look a certain way besides this. <laughs> So that is what I do. And actually, doing it this way, this kind of simplified version, I just think it, it doesn't create as much chaos in the pattern. So sometimes when you simplify things, it almost makes the picture even bigger, if that makes any sense. Now with a lot of a lot of the times I will use my hammer to kind of run my break through the glass. This is a great way to do that on like different curves. And you just want to make sure when you do do that that your score line is good. Um, if you do it and you and you don't have a deep enough score line, you're not going to get anywhere and most likely you will just fracture the glass in a spot that you don't want to. So when you do decide to do it like this, this kind of technique, make sure you have a solid score line. And it will just pop off like that. Because this pattern for her dress, even though I simplified it, you know, I still, I just kind of cut out the pieces of the pattern as I go. I will lose all the pieces. If I cut them all out at once, I will lose them. I'll be looking for her sleeve for like days. So I like to just cut out the pattern I'm using at that moment and then put it aside and hope it survives the rest of the day.
so pretty I love like the motion of this pattern I just think it's beautiful she just is so pretty <laughs> I can't get over how pretty she is but now since I'm designing my own wings I want to keep her still so I am actually going to just kind of tack solder all of her little joints I don't want to get the edges because I will be putting glass there so make sure if you you know do it this way where you kind of design as you go because at this point I still was not sure how I wanted to do the wings but I knew this is how I wanted her so I will design the wings around her so you want to make sure if you do that you do not solder the edges because then you won't be able to get them. So these are the wings. They're actually much more complicated and then I really simplified them because I wanted to make her very, I didn't want it, you can kind of overdo it sometimes if you over design. There's too many lines, there's too many solder lines and it gets kind of chaotic. Now the glass I'm choosing to do for the wings in itself is chaotic and I, I wanted that. I wanted to do some sort of lined glass to make the feathers really pop. So I used this crinkle glass which I love and this one is iridized. It's called clear crinkle or iridized clear crinkle, one or the other. Definitely iridized is the name. <laughs> and I basically placed her on there and traced her around my wings. And that's how I know where I'm going to cut. And then I just draw that template. I draw it on the crinkle side because I want to make sure these wings are facing up and because I knew this was the direction I wanted my angel and I did not want to cut this out and end up having crinkle texture on the bottom. So make sure you know which way is up and down. Now as you see in her like waist area and in between her hair and her hand, that is open glass, open area so there's no glass there. So technically that would be a weak point in my pattern. So especially how I have that little hand there, it's just definitely like a weak point and I want to fill that in. And that would be where the wings would be anyway. So I made sure to put some glass in there, make the piece stronger, but also to continue that design of the wings. And then I just solder her into place. If your solder doesn't stick, just all you have to do is reapply some flux and if that doesn't work, just step away from it. You know, don't let it get the best of you because usually when you go back to it, it'll get covered. Sometimes it can be a little finicky, so just make sure you don't keep running over the same spot over and over and over again. And for hanging her, what I decided to do was put jump rings there. And I do that on the top of her wings where the two pieces meet. It's always best to put your jump rings or your wire or however you're going to hang them where two pieces of glass meet. So one will go on one side and one will go on the other and if there's a lot of pressure it pulls from both pieces of glass. So that is why I chose to put it in these two areas instead of like the tips of the wings that would just make this really, really weak. So just keep in mind when you do put, you know, wires or jump rings that you're really putting it in a good structural place. You don't wanna make that mistake. You don't wanna make a beautiful piece and just jack it all up. 
Now with my solder, I purposely chose to kind of rough it up. So I know a lot of you that are really into stained glass would be like, oh, those beads are really messy. But I actually wanted this to be antiqued and almost like statuesque. So what I did was I made my solder pretty messy, pretty bumpy. And then when I washed it, I only care like washed it one time. So what I did for this, I wanted it to look almost like granite or antique old. I wanted the copper to look like it's aged. So I did not wash this as much as I normally would have. In the end, it came out gorgeous and the patina just acted all funky, which was perfect. Here she is, she is gorgeous, I love her. I know I say that all the time, but you never know what a piece is gonna really look like until it's finished. Even if you've done that piece a million times, if you change up anything, it will look different. I just get so excited and I put her on a copper chain and I just think she's magical. I hope whoever is receiving this loves it. Like you, be strong to hold the powers of the sun.